is a 1998 Japanese horror film that is piss your pants scary, but after taking a look, America said, hold my beer, I can do it better, giving us 2000 into the ring. So, let's get into it, shall we? The film starts with two young ladies talking about boys, how periods suck, and if they should keep their clothes on for the pillow fight. But before the fun can begin, the friend decides to ruin the vibes by saying there's a tape going around that after watching it, you'll get a phone call saying you'll die in seven days. And this chick, after admitting she watched it, is on day siente. Stacy, I see you watching my videos. Why are you not subscribed? Come on, baby, give me a chance. I'm cool. I'm cool. The TV starts to flip out, while the chick's friend is nowhere to be found, as the scared girl stumbles around until she's hit with some scary shit, causing her to have the same reaction I do when I see my bank balance. Cut to this little nitwit and his mom, Rachel, who are on their way to the funeral of the chick who died because they're both related. While there, Norman Bates over here is acting like a creep, staring at his deceased relative's underwear, as Rachel pesters a distraught mom to pour the tea, girl, on how exactly her daughter died. Rachel then puts her cougar coat on and goes outside to get down with the kids, only to learn that most of them are six feet down on the ground, just like her niece, learning from her friends about the tape and how it kills you in seven days, which is also when Rachel's rent is due. So, working for the local newspaper, she decides to run the story about how her niece and other local teens were mysteriously killed after watching an unknown videotape, without of course, you know, running this by the parents of the deceased, because apparently she's a boss-ass bitch with a big scoop that takes priority over feelings. Rachel heads to the cabin in the woods, <laughs> wink, where the teens watch the videotape and by movie magic, it's still there, cause in reality, if a group of kids found a tape that killed you, that shit would be stolen in a heartbeat and passed around at parties like the new STD on the street. <laughs> she can get, Rachel decides to recruit the guy that stalks her son, showing him the film, and surprise, surprise, he has no fucking clue what this tape is about either, saying he doesn't believe her and that she's always been a bad photographer, so what's the issue here? Rachel makes a copy, goes to the library, and discovers that the woman in the video used to own a horse ranch on an island, but after adopting Samara, who's cuckoo banana bread crazy, bad things started to happen. Heading to the local asylum, Rachel meets her niece's friend, who was there the night she died to get some more information, but Miss Carrot Stick over here says nothing while well, knowing that Rachel only has a few days left to live. At her apartment, Rachel sends this 13 going on 30 babysitter home, tries to relax only for Samara to haunt her ass. But it was only a dream, Saya. Oh, was it? But Damon decides, since he couldn't sleep, why not put something on? And Ding Dong over here decided the best place to leave the killer tape was rewound in the VCR. The phone rings and Rachel screams, Sink on the children! To the little girl ghost who wasn't thought about at all when it comes to being a child, but it turns out to be stalker guy. He watched the tape. Who, who watched the tape? What a twist! Deciding to drop off their son over at Rachel's sister's emotionally stable house, Rachel also looks through her niece's diary for more clues while Damien finally gets some quality daddy time. The thing is, I don't think I make a good father. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to like not even try. And thank God my baby mama is chill when it comes to child support. By the way, did I make it crystal clear that I'm not going to support you in any way? Um, <laughs> you like jazz? 
Rachel heads to the island where craziness happened, and while on the boat, she decides to play My Little Pony, causing it to become possessed, and try to get the hell out of Dodge as Rachel screams on the top of her lungs for somebody to help, while doing everything in her power to get in the goddamn way, causing the pony to jump right into the boat's propellers and turn into glue. Anywho, while on the island, Rachel sees Samara's daddy, who declines having a daughter and basically tells her to get lost, causing Rachel to head over to the local stock's office, who informs her that Samara was a misunderstood kid who needed love. So we of course locked her ass up, and ever since she's been gone, things have been butter. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, Bozo over here has been breaking into various file rooms to get any info on Samara, and once he finds some important shit, he also is off to the island to help out Rachel, who is now back at Samara's daddy's house, breaking in, sitting down, and watching the new Disney movie called Lilo and Shock Therapy. Samara can't sleep, won't eat, and makes people see crazy shit in their own dreams. And that she's sorry, but her anger is here, and it won't be coming down no matter how many lives she destroys. But he doesn't know. He doesn't know what? Daddy doesn't know that I switched his IPAs with horse piss. <laughs> <laughs> Get your fat ass back here. The dad dips out, Bozo comes in just in time, but with Rachel's running out, they search around for more clues, finding Samara's room that was built in the barn, and sure, that sucks, but hey, at least she got cable. Hashtag PBS Kids, where you at? Deciding that now the answer to their problem is back in the cabin in the woods, they head back over there, but things are still up in the air on how to actually defeat the curse, causing Bozo to flip out. As marbles roll into the center of the floor, Rachel says score bitch as bozo starts ripping up the floor revealing a well that hopefully grants rachel's wish of not dying but samara thinking it's getting kind of lonely down here drop kicks rachel's butt into wonderland finding the white restless spirit of samara who shows rachel how mommy dearest over here gave her an unwanted facial Okay, real quick nitpick here. Samara was born in 1970, was murdered when she was eight, and plastic bags weren't introduced to America until 1979. So my dear Watson, the filmmakers indeed fuck is up. <laughs> God, I'm so cool. Samara is set free. Rachel goes home thinking the curse is now gone, but she couldn't be more wrong. Why did you do that? What's wrong, honey? You weren't supposed to help her. Thanks, you little shit, for holding out till the end to tell her this vital information. Meanwhile, over at Bozo's apartment, Samara goes prime time, baby! Oh, baby, baby, we belong together! Rachel finds her ex dead, leaves her DNA all over the crime scene, and dips. And when she finally gets home, she starts yelling at her traumatized kid to leave the room while turning fully batshit crazy, wondering what the hell did she do that her ex didn't? Was it, I don't know, solving Samara's murder? Getting her body out of the moldy, watery well? Who knows? So why not smash the only copy that you have that holds all the answers? Oh, <laughs> you sneaky bastard. <laughs> Oh. So Rachel thinks that if her son makes a copy and shows somebody, then everything will be okay. But what happens to the person they show it to? Well, folks, I guess we'll just have to find out in the sequel. The end. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. We're almost up to 500 subscribers. That's crazy. And I, I just thank you for believing in me. Most of all, I believe in you. Have a wonderful day. That's it. Bye-bye. Yes, alone in the hallways as always The garbage cans are my only friend